The scenes from before the festival uh, radiated love and kindness. That 10 second clip of Shani Luke dancing, you watch it and you think this is what they fought for. And then there's the image of Shani Luke on the back of that truck and the one of her being dragged through the streets of Gaza, thousands cheering and running after her desecrated body. Can you even imagine a starker contrast of good versus evil? It was joy, love, life versus violence, rape, and death. Surely, I thought in my naivete, the left would see themselves reflected in these music-loving young people who looked like they had stepped out of the hate ashbury in the 70s. Surely Noah Argamani begging for her life as the butchers ride off with her would inspire in the left a sense of identification and a corresponding sense of fear and anger. How could it not? Friends, it did not. Leftist women found nothing in their hearts to say about it for months. There was a total failure of the international feminist community to stand up for the Israeli women who had been brutalized by Hamas in a particularly sexual way. Despite the preponderance of evidence, there was a code of silence from the usual suspects. Some would even deny it. YouTube personalities formed what I like to call an our Hamas would never brigade to defend the butchers and the rapists from the evidence of their crimes, insisting it was all war propaganda. It goes beyond that to the core of leftist ideology, which is built on a belief system that has erased the difference between right and wrong. Now, this belief system is one you will know well if you have been to a university in the last 40 years or an American newsroom or on TikTok or in a meeting with any cultural institution in America or any progressive organization, including any liberal Jewish organization, or if you're on the board of a museum or even in a writer's room in Hollywood. People call it critical race theory or Marxism or social justice. I call it wokeness. Wokeness is when you take a worldview that was once based on the difference between right versus wrong, virtue versus, virtue versus evil, and you replace it with a worldview that does not distinguish between right versus wrong, but instead suggests that the world is built on the primary binary of powerful versus powerless. They ascribe inherent virtue to those they see as powerless and evil to those they see as powerful and they superimpose some characteristic onto the binary, whether it's race or gender or sexuality or national origin or religion, rendering all people, for example, who they see as people of color powerless and oppressed and thus virtuous and all white people powerful oppressors who are inherently evil and compromised. Um, this woke worldview absolutely dominates the left, which means it dominates the cultural and intellectual output of the United States these days. Once our elites were eager to offend the powers that be with their art and their scholarship or their journalism, now they will conform at all costs. And the thing they conform to is the view that people of color are inherently virtuous no matter what they do because they have no agency and are oppressed and marginalized while white people are inherently evil, the root of everything bad and responsible for any ills that befall us. This is the source of 21st century leftist anti-Semitism. Every Jew is coded as white and thus they are the oppressors and thus they are bad. And every Palestinian is coded as a person of color and thus oppressed and thus inherently virtuous. And that includes Hamas. Every Palestinian outranks every Jew on the oppression scale and thus any Palestinian in conflict with any Jew is the one the left must side with. The Jew has all the agency and is the oppressor and the Palestinian has no agency and is the oppressed. Anything bad that happens between them must ergo be the Jew's fault because you cannot blame someone with no agency for anything. They are an innocent like a child. To the woke, the less powerful has no responsibility to act ethically because their rank on the oppression scale means they cannot act at all. And thus they are inherently imbued with virtue no matter what they do. Their abjection is their virtue. And that goes for the terrorists among them as well. Because to the woke, people of color have no agency when a so-called person of color commits a heinous act against a so-called white person, the agency of their actions must be reassigned to their victims who have no who have agency. What this means is that when a Palestinian rapes a Jewish woman, the agency was hers. It was not his. She remains the oppressor. His act was her fault and her suffering does not release her from the burden of her status as oppressor even in death. 
That is why leftist feminists cannot side with raped Israeli women. To do so is to betray everything they believe. They truly see the Israeli women as deserving of everything that happened to them and having brought it on themselves. Like the conservatives of yore who blamed rape on the miniskirt worn by the victim, the left today blames the fact that Israel has more power than Hamas for everything Hamas does. They simply cannot think their way out of seeing Hamas as virtuous because to do so would be to admit that their entire worldview is not only wrong, but is fucking disgusting.